All right, so just recently I went to a train event and got my very first model train. And I figured, you know, model trains are kind of a popular thing to review on YouTube. So I thought, what if we just, you know, do that? So. This, this this is TLM. I'm I'm the editor. Yeah, we got we got we got the TV right there behind the camera. The editor. My tree boxes so well, don't I? Because <laughs> you know boxes. Boxes are just such great things. In them. You know. Again, boxes. So, all right, let's let's just start with the tether because it's more. Um, <laughs> Um, honestly, it's, the tender is actually really simple. I really do like the back of it here with the buffers. Um, they're not, they're not, um, I don't know what you call it. Sam's trains says it all the time, but they're not, like, they don't push in, you know, if you know what I'm saying. Like, you know, they don't, like, you don't, they don't have the buffer, like, you know, going in and you push on it. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, this is, um, this is the tender. It's pretty simple. Uh, quite a large tender, I would say. Especially when you look at like the new Trackmaster stuff with Thomas. I mean, seriously, it's, it's the, the tenders are like that big, and then the engine's like. You know, well, I mean, you got a picture of it next to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's crazy, but um, yeah. And then the engine. Um, so this is actually the uh, Princess Helena Victoria. Um, and also, like Trackmaster, they have side runs, and it's cool. Take along wooden railway girdle. They didn't have moving side runs, right? But this, I mean, look at that. That is just it did. So yeah, I was just I really like the moving side runs. It just gives uh, boy, gives some life to the engine, and um, I just really like it. Um, so yeah, it really gives some life to the engine. Um, I'd say from the front, it almost looks like, uh, like Henry, uh, in his black five shape, um, as you can see here, um, very, very, uh, very, I would say very much like Henry, just because you have this more square part here, um, and then you have the angled boiler, if you know what I'm talking about, and, uh, yeah, I just, I really like this one, and I'm probably going to make a couple OCs, um, based on this one, just because it's such a, such a cool train. I can't, I can't help myself. It's so cool. Um, but yeah, and then the coupling system, I don't know if you can see here, you might have to zoom in just a little bit, but, uh, you can see the coupling system actually works extremely well. Look at that. Like, it literally just, you barely even touch it, and it connects. So, coupling system's great. Um, and the paint, the, the, the delivery is just... When I was looking through the Ruby trains they had, they did have the Dominion of Canada, as you can see here. So, yeah, I almost got the Dominion of Canada because, you know, LNA RA4 is just, just beautiful, okay? Um, and they didn't have the Dwight D. Eisenhower, otherwise, I could pretty much guarantee I would have gotten um, But yeah, the Dwight D. Eisenhower is probably one of my favorite locomotives, um, especially among the famous ones, aside from maybe the big boy. But, you know, I mean, the big boy is pretty cool. Because it's a big boy. Anyway, uh, but yeah, the delivery uh, was kind of what made it for me. Uh, like I said, I was going to get an A4, the Dominion of Canada, as you can see here. But, man, delivery just, it's, it's pretty smacking in the throat. <laughs> so, I got this one just because of the BR Blue livery. I mean, seriously, imagine, imagine like, imagine Gordon in this livery. That, that'd be pretty cool. That would, that would, that'd be pretty cool. And so, um, just overall, I would say this is probably a pretty good engine. Pretty good engine. <laughs> yeah, you know, pretty pretty good engine. I mean, think about it. it this Imagine if this was Gordon's lip, right? And, you know, like, look, look how good that would be. Just think about that, right? Just think about that for a second. And then you have this kind of a livery. And I hope you stay dead. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, um, I definitely like it with the rectangular-ish, the oval buffers, I guess, kind of similar to what Gordon has in his, it, like, just what Gordon has when he's not streamlined, um, and then he's got the circle buffers in the back, again, akin to Gordon when he's not streamlined, um, and so you can see the wheel arrangement is a 
uh, you're probably easier to see from the bottom, is a 462. So that's pretty cool. I, I really like 462 tender engines. I don't know why, they're just, there's something special. Um, but yeah, not much else to say about it. It's a neat train, I love the moving side rods, and can't well wait till the day I get this running on some track. I think let's do another train now. So, let me, let me just pick up the box because, you know, I, I treated it so wonderfully. <laughs> Alright, so, next train. This one is not one I bought. I mean, technically I bought parts for it. Um, but I just took apart stuff and reused parts. You can probably already kind of guess it's a Lego one, which you'd be right. It is my own uh, mock, not a set. Um, and this is my take on Rosie. Now, I don't have pink, so I did it in white. And I also didn't have enough red, so I just did it in white. Now, some things that are like super amazing techniques that I used with this um, is the boiler actually comes out and it's just all this one piece here. So that's super helpful when I'm fixing stuff like with the side tanks here. Um, so yeah, this is this really neat uh, technique for the boiler there. And the funnel is one of my favorite things that I've done with this and the side rods. I did have to watch a video to get this to work, but the side rods, as you can see, they actually uh, spin properly, you know, so that's really cool. The, the gear, or the, uh, the, the side rods and the valve gear, all it all works just so splendidly because, you know, that's what James would say. <laughs> um, but yeah, and the, the buffers are just these two by two dish plates, um, as you can see. And then the couplings. I was going to use chains. That's what I normally use on my Lego mocks. But I changed my mind and just used these little gun pieces. Oh, uh, sorry, I hear you. you can see the gun piece. Um, that's what I normally use. Um, and if you if you couldn't see that, you might not have been able to see that. Here's, here's a picture of the gun piece right here. Um, so yeah, gun piece. I use, I use that for the couplings. And then uh, the pistons were actually probably something I thought would be really complicated, but it actually wasn't. So I just used these two by three pieces with the hole there, as you can see, with this Technic, Technic pin here, or Technic uh, axle on it, right there. And then just this valve here that extends out a little bit, which was a little bit annoying because that made the total width of this engine at 10 studs, which is a little bit annoying because normally I build them at seven studs wide, which is pretty difficult to do, but I usually build them at seven studs wide uh, this one is eight studs wide mainly, but it goes out to ten, which is a little bit annoying, but I suppose you have to deal with it. There is a lot of snot involved with this, as you can easily see from, like, you know, the, the uh, the buffer beams, and obviously the face is snot, you know, that's, like, the obvious snot. Um, but yeah, it's honestly one of my favorite, one of my favorite blocks I've ever done, if not my favorite. I just, I just love it. And the face, um... So what I did is I took some stickers for the eyebrows, the eyes, and the mouth, and did that. And then I just did the freckles there in, uh, with a skinny Sharpie. So yeah, there's that's Rosie's fix. Super proud of the way this has turned out. I mean, seriously, it's just great. Um, and then you've got the cap, which I'll show you with the boiler off just to make it easy. You can see that it's got snot here for the windows. So, that, so I used these one by one uh, sort of lamp Type pieces with a one by one cheese slope in white right there to make the little angle in the corner of the windows there so there's that um, I used a little bit of snot inside the cab here as you can see to make it flat there and not have the hole from the windows and things um, and then one of my favorite parts that I designed myself without help from YouTube videos and stuff was the step ladders so you actually just have let me show you here You've got just these two snap pieces, one with studs on top, and one with, like, one with the studs coming out going down, and one with them coming out going up, and then you put a flat 2x2 two two on top, and then you just connect it, just like so, connect it on there, you know, there you go, it's, it's incredibly simple, it's just crazy to think that uh, this was ever something that I was, you know, worried that I wouldn't be able to do. I was actually kind of scared I wouldn't be able to put any 
uh, step ladders on it just because of how insanely complicated it actually was to put those on there. So, but yeah, I did get it to work. Super proud of it. So yeah, there's the step ladder. Pretty simple. And I did put a two by three on the back just to make it flat so that when you stick it on here, it will uh, line up. Well, not quite line up, but just so that when you have the wheel here, uh, it won't like scratch on studs or anything. So I just put the tile there just so that it doesn't scratch against studs or anything. But yeah, that is pretty much rosy. Not much else to her. One of my favorite mocks. Um, yeah. So that's rosy. And next one here is Harvey. This one is also another one of my favorites. But this is not exactly how he appears in the TV series, and as you can see, some of the stickers that I put on were coming off a little bit. Um, but that's okay, we can put those back on later. Um, but yeah, this is honestly one of my favorite ones that I've ever built, just my own take on a look of a character. So none of this is actually based on specifically like trying to be accurate to the show or uh, his basics or anything. This is just me building it just kind of how I want. So it is very similar to how he appears in the show. Um, and I tried to get his whistle here, as you can see, uh, making it underneath his crane arm without stopping the ability of the crane arm to turn, which is one of my favorite things. As you can see, the crane arm actually has a moving gear here. So that was, I mean, that took me forever to figure out. But once I did, I was super proud of it. Um, yeah, so Harvey's just got a very simple boiler that just attaches by, by these two little two little pieces uh, studs from that snot piece. And it's literally just that. That's that's it for salt or salty <laughs> for Harvey's boiler. And his face attaches just with one stud like that. So I have these uh, sort of L or, uh, macaroni pieces, the tiles around a two by two with the one stud in the middle of the two by two round jumper plate. And then I just attach his face on that and there you go. So there's that. And then uh, I decided to put lamps on him because I thought that'd be kind of cool. So there's that. And then his cap. His cap was actually <laughs> more difficult to do than you would think. Um, it looks pretty simple in boxes, but to get this to work, to have it open here, I had to use these little these little pieces that kind of like what they used for the wands for Harry Potter until they made their own molds. Just these little stick pieces. I believe they used them with uh, Harry, Voldemort, and Hermione in the Lego Dimensions packs, which are right here for the team pack and right here for the fun pack. Um, but yeah, they just used those pieces for the wands. And this is, I just used four of them and attached the cab here. And the cabs actually have a whistle that's attached. So there's just this little part that comes down from the cab here with the whistle, just like that. So, there's that. Pretty simple. But then the more complicated part of the cap was getting this to go on and actually stay because I needed to. Oh, yeah, and also this is removable, the crane arm. Um, the most difficult part was making the the um, platform here, the, the foot plate, actually flat with the tile because it's a super thin foot plate. So I had to make sure it connected here with the chassis. And also connected based on these little white, here I'll take this off again, based on the white tiles in there. So it was actually pretty difficult to get that done. But once I did finish, um, and I just kind of sat back for a minute and just stared at it. I mean, seriously, I was just in awe of the fact that I actually managed to do it and make it look pretty okay. So that's pretty much hard for you. Not much else to say about it. Oh, the side rods and the valve here. I can't believe I didn't mention that already. So the side rods and valve here, completely my own design, um, and it actually works. I've seen designs where they don't have the part going across both wheels, just this angly part, that, just this uh, dark gray part, as you can see here, that connects with this light gray one to this part here. So, yeah, I'm not really, not much to say about him, uh, but yeah. So for the Rosie and the Harvey uh, mugs, I would say definitely shout out to Wooden Tony. 
I have seen your videos on your Lego mocks of, you know, Thomas, James, Percy, Edward, Toby, Henrietta, Annie Claire, Belster, Handel, Rusty, Peter, Sam, Renaeus, or excuse me, not Peter, Sam, uh, Scar Lowy. Um, they were, and they were great. I'm honestly, I, I wish I could have like watched you build them. They, they, those are just amazing. So, um, obviously you don't have to, you can do what you want, but seriously, I encourage you to make a mock of Harmony. I want, I want to see your take on Harmony. So, again, you, you don't have to do what you want, but I'd really like to see how you do Harvey. So, that's Harvey for you. We'll get him out of here. And then, uh, we've got this one, which is actually an OC. I don't have a concept art for him yet, but, um, this is Nathan, or Nathaniel. We just call him Nathan because, you know, short of say Nathan. <laughs> and we're all lazy these days. But, um, he is based on a BR Class 17, uh, as you can see here. I did him in the red livery just because I didn't have any green, and I thought green would probably look better because, you know, Derek from season five, right here. But then I was like, you know, Derek from season five in green, and then this one being in green, I was like, it's kind of feels like copying. So I just changed it to the red, and honestly, I really like how it turned out. It's probably one of my favorite, uh, favorite mocks that I've ever built. So the chassis is super simple. Um, let me see if I can get this off here. Uh, I can't. <laughs> um, so, here, I'll just show you this yellow part here so you can see like, the main shape of it. Go to hell. So, you've got, so what I did here for the three lamps, they're all the same actual build, actually. So I just took one of these one by one uh, snot lamp pieces and then took a one by one gray uh, plate with a one by one uh, yellow transparent tile, uh, round transparent tile, and did that. And then the, that's the same build for all four of these lamps. And then it's five studs wide, this part is, with a one by two slope. If I can get it off here, a one by two slope, as you can see. And then there's just a one by one in the middle here to make it have that kind of sort of curve shape on top. So there's that. And then stick that back on. And then the space is the same basic story for the most part. Um, it just, it's, it's a face instead of lamps. So all I had to do there was switch a few things, just a few little things with like the snot so that obviously you can have a face and not lamps. So I just changed out a few pieces so I can have these three studs of snot then connect them to these three holes on the 2x4 right there. You can see it when they're both this way. You can see how it connects and just like that. And there was just this tiny little bit of space um, of yellow under the face before it hits the, the bottom. So it's not quite flush, but um, I suppose I kind of like that that way. But the face is four studs wide, even though the rest of it's five which actually I really like it. It, it really just, it adds some character to it, I guess. So yeah, there's the face, very simple. So the whole thing is a total of seven studs wide, which I thought would be pretty hard to do, but it actually wasn't because of the trucks for the wheels. So the truck is literally just super simple. I used brick head eyes because I ran out of plain black studs. So uh, then I just have these spinny pieces here so that they can, you know, spin on the, um, on the train and or excuse me on the engine it's not a train the train or the thing is the engine's pull <laughs> so yeah uh but yeah and then this just sticks on to you can see i used a six by eight and then a one by eight here and so this just actually sticks onto two of these little circles not in between them like you would normal studs um like on a normal set but um so it just sticks in the holes there yeah, which again is a little bit different than most trains and stuff and now I can't get it back on so that's pretty shameful uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not funny <laughs> but yeah so now I'm gonna show you some cool stuff I can do with this I'm just gonna take these curve tracks for now and set those aside all right now I don't take the straight ones because the straight ones are straight and not gay, so that means they're straight. Because that made a lot of sense. So, yeah. So, I'll show you this here in just a second. So, you can put this on there and have it 
run on the curves actually, and it runs smoothly. Look at this. Just look at this. It, it's beautiful. It's absolutely, positively beautiful. More beautiful than my face anyway, which, not that that's hard to beat, but you know. Uh, but yeah, it's super smooth on the curves, which is amazing. And I also have this truck that I made, just, just a slate truck, and I put a load in it, just put some brown, gold, gray, dark gray uh, um, plates and tiles in it, all one by one, uh, just to kind of give it that feel of like rocks or something in it, or maybe slate. And so how I connect that is, um, I'm gonna take these Technic pins. Um, I usually do the light gray ones because for some reason I find the black ones are like very rigid. And so when I have the black ones, they like want to like st stick really tightly. And so then when you're trying to turn it, you're like pulling it and it's like super tight and not working. So I usually just the light gray ones. So that's really all I have to say about that. So goodbye to you. Then the slate truck also runs pretty smoothly on the curves. Not quite as smoothly as that one because I don't have the trucks for the wheels because then they're actually rigid. Um, but yeah, this truck is actually seven sets wide, just like um, most of my engines. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I forgot to mention, RV was eight sets wide. But yeah, it's probably one of my favorite ones right here. So we're just gonna set those aside here and get rid of the tracks because we don't need those small tracks. Because you know, small tracks, well, let's just say the small tracks don't work when, when, when it's time to get out the big guns. So, probably wondering what, what, what are the what are the big guns? What, what, what's that? Now, if 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 you take my other Lego trains, seven studs wide, eight studs wide, one's even ten studs wide technically. It's not not very big, right? And my Renea smock that I made a while back, I don't have it anymore. Was only five studs wide because it was narrow gauge. But again, they're all really small. But big guns, boy, the big guns are big guns. So, all right, big guns, like I said, big guns. Um, his face definitely embodies his character. Now, I haven't said it yet, but you can probably guess, because, you know, his name is totally not right there. His name is Duncan. Yeah. Duncan was always one of my favorite narrow gauge characters, because, you know, he trained boy. <laughs> um, but... I don't know, I, just, I always liked Duncan, because he was that one guy who was sort of rebellious in a way, but like not in a way that was bad, I guess, just in a way that was... I don't really know what to say. Just in a way that like caused trouble more by accident than on purpose. Um, I don't really know what I'm trying to say, but like Duncan was always just one of my favorite characters. Now you're probably wondering why I built him in all these different colors. Well, I started in blue because his base is uh, Douglas from the town of Clean Railway in Wales is actually blue, and I really liked the idea of doing him in blue, but unfortunately I ran out of blue when I finished that section of the cat, and so what I did is I took, um, and I started doing yellow, as you can see on this side, because that's how it appeared in the TV series, and then I was going to do red, because that was how it appeared in the railway series, but at the time I already had Nathan, and, um, uh, so I had Nathan built already, and then I had Michael, um, from... Uh, the episode Helpful Percy and uh, Red Engines from our Sodor series, which go check it out if you haven't already. It's great. But that's all that exists of Michael <laughs> anymore. I had to take him apart and go apart. So he's gone now. But um, there's that. So I didn't really have much red before. So I didn't do it red. And I thought, well, if he's red in the railway series and yellow in the TV series, I suppose I could use orange. So I did that. And the number six, actually, I decided that on my own. I was going to do it like circular like it is in like on uh in the tv show and in the rally series then i changed my mind and did it like this because i just kind of liked it like that i just thought that was you know something different but i kind of like it now the whistle this is honestly one of my favorite things that i can do with this model so it's actually just a one by one stud with a one by one tile in yellow and then i used the one by one or excuse me one by two number plate with uh attached by some snot right there as you can see and then I've got this uh, one by one with the uh, lamp sort of shape and then the one by one tile on top with a one by one uh, plate round and two one by one uh, cylinders and a one by one plate round or tile, round, excuse me, on top only yellow. And then I just stick, stuck that to the um, dumper plate. And there you have it. You've got the whistle. 
Now, one dome is supposed to be square, and one is supposed to be more circular. But I built them both square because I didn't have any, um, didn't have any two by four, um, excuse me, four by four round pieces all in the same color to make it tall enough. So I just did a square. So there's that. But um, yeah. Oh yeah, and the wheels. I did do. I did find some more blue pieces after I finished the cab, but I already had the rest of it done. Your mother. <laughs> Um, so anyway, um, I don't think that Lego bricks can have a mother, but, so yeah, there's that, pretty simple, but pretty big, so yeah, and then, um, just like that, I've got another big gun, season 4 slate trucks, actually there's only one, um, so what I did here was, uh, like I did with, with Duncan, as you can see, Duncan has got black buffers and black coupling hook, there and his funnel fell off. That's that's nice. Except for that was supposed to happen to Peter Sam, not Duncan. Well, anyway, so you've got the coupling hook and the buffers all in black on Duncan. But however, I did not have enough black pieces, so I did black buffers on one side and gray on the other side. Which actually I kind of like the gray better, so I may end up changing this to gray eventually later. Um, so yeah, and this is actually compatible with Duncan. It's got the same uh, wheel width, four studs in between each wheel, and each wheel is two studs wide. Um, yeah, fits and scales with Duncan. And you know, if you had Peter Sam, you could just like, you know, I regret that. I'll fix it later. Actually, that was a super simple build, but yeah. So that was, that was, pretty, <laughs> that was pretty nice. I'll rebuild that someday. I'm regretting my entire life right now. Well, moving on. Uh, so we got we got Steven here uh, before he was repainted and rebuilt or whatever. So this is uh, built by Dot Stunky Boy and he gave it to me a while back. Um, it did have a crown piece. I don't remember what I did with that. I think I was using it on one of my <laughs> one of my other <laughs> Steven mugs um, that I was working on at the time when he gave it to me, um, which I took apart now because I needed other pieces for other things. Because you know, I built lots of things at lots of times. But also, I, 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 whatever. So uh, there's that. Uh, pretty simple. And the tender actually connects with just this little uh, ball joint system. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really like it. It does not actually fit on Lego tracks because you know it's, it's, there's kind of no wheels. Um, I am working on figuring out a way to get this to four studs wide so that I can add the two big wheels on the outside here with the working side rods, which I did have at one point a working side rod system on a four stud wide Steven Mach, uh, which was actually just a prototype build. It wasn't a finished product or anything, but it was like, so Steven was, you know, four studs wide. So imagine if this was four studs wide. We had the Steven, just the engine, no tender, um, and the side rods came out like that much. And I was like, that looks like it just came straight from hell. And so I was like, yeah, the, 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 no, it's not happening. So I didn't, I didn't do anything with that because I, I kind of just got rid of the mug because I was getting frustrated with it not working, which happens to a lot of my mugs, unfortunately. So yeah, the, those are, uh, are my Lego trains. Um, yeah. Now it isn't a train, but um, a long while back I did make Jack from Thomas and Friends. Um, he is probably one of my favorite characters, who's, or probably, excuse me, one of my favorite non-rail characters. Um, and so, when, when I was building him, I just built him in orange because that's the color I most recognize him in. Um, uh, and, like, and I know he's more of a reddish orange in the model era, he's more red in the CGI era, and a lot of his merchandise makes him red, but I just, I really liked the orange. So I made him an orange, um, and I didn't have a gray bucket piece for his front loader, so I just did that in yellow. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, pretty, pretty, it looks pretty simple, but it's actually a pretty complicated build, and it does come apart a lot. I mean, it's fragile. Um, it's four studs wide, and it, well, actually at its widest point, it is six studs wide. Uh, but anyway, it's four studs wide without the front loader. With the front loader, it's six studs wide. Um, and then the rest of it is, um, the rest of it is, 
uh, or excuse me, <laughs> the rest of it. Why do I keep saying that? Um, his cab just fell off again. <laughs> like I said, it sucks. So let me just let me just grab his cab for a minute. All right, so we got a cab. <laughs> oh, so like I said, it looks super simple, but it's actually quite complicated. So uh, this, I have this. The uh, snot here. So you've got the brick head piece there, and then you've got this one by four snot piece there. And I put a one by four in orange, right on top of that brick head, or uh, not the brick head, the other one, the other one by four snot piece. And then I just take a one by four normal brick in orange with cheese slopes in orange, and then I take a one by four brick with a one by four, or two two one by four bricks with the cheese slopes, and attach that to the brick head piece as you can see there, and it's actually flush with the other cheese slopes. Like, it is perfectly flush. It's, it's amazing. Um, and then this one doesn't actually line up perfectly flush, um, but it's two 1x4 uh, bricks with a 1x4 plate, and then again, uh, orange cheese slopes. And uh, cab's pretty simple. I even got these little bumpy things. They are actually a third-party element. They're not actually Lego, but um, they still work. And then the front loader here, as, as I said, it's yellow because I didn't have gray. Um, and it does move up and down. So that's cool, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it works pretty well. Uh, like, it, like, it rolls pretty well. Again, six studs wide, it's wide, it's wide, it's 20, but for the most part, it's like four studs wide. It's pretty small. I mean, about the size of my hand. So, there's, yeah. And then... By the way, this is a 17 year old and a 16 year old. <laughs> yeah, imagine building Thomas trains at you know 17 years old. Yeah, who does that? Yeah, yeah. so this is Reneas. He's currently missing the face because reasons. So, since he's missing the face, I'm gonna give him the face. Let's just take this bucket of beautiful pieces and we're gonna find him a face because he needs a face. Otherwise, he's he, he can't not have a face. No, that face. No, it doesn't fit. <laughs> so that's how you beat Bowser in the Super Mario 3D world. Uh, <laughs> way easier than you thought, I know, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah. Damn, that's, that's how you beat Bowser in Super Mario 64. <laughs> no, what did I say? 3D world. I said 3D world. Um, yeah. And it broke him. Excuse me, you, you broke him. What you called that? Not a him. Oh. He's an it. Because he's a truck, so he's an it. Cousin. Harry Scott. <laughs> uh, I am. I am very mature. I have a job. I work somewhere. That means I have to be a good boy. What the heck? I don't. I think I can be a bad boy. Just get in trouble. And that's why I don't do that. And they don't get in trouble. So they don't do that on YouTube videos. Um, what else was I talking about? Oh, yeah, so um, that's how you beat Bowser and Mario 3D World. Yeah, I will find it. I promise. <laughs> and it's not a good face. That's <laughs> not a good face. <laughs> that's his face. No. Die. That, that's his face. Looks like the side of his engine. <laughs> that's not his face. <laughs> I know. I know it's taking a long time, but I swear I have a good face. Bro, that's his face right now. I just found it. That, that's just, just straight up. There's no better Renee's face. I mean, seriously, look at that. That is a beauty. And a beast. That's some soda fallout crap. So we're not gonna do that. <laughs> um, okay. In all seriousness, I cannot find a face, so I give up. I find a face. <laughs> I swear I'll find a face, but I give up. So I couldn't find a face, so <laughs> we're just gonna use the Mr. Freeze face. <laughs> That's so cursed. Um, we're just gonna use it upside down because that looks like Renaeus. 
But that face looks like Renee's. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, he doesn't have a good face because, you know, I can't freaking find a good face for him. Because, because it's just stupid. Um, this was actually really simple. It was mostly just bricks here, and then this boiler was actually, again, really simple. I just had to put some snot pieces, because again, it's five studs wide, but it's a boiler, as you can see, it's two studs wide there. So I just had to put some snot pieces here. Or not, not some snot. I'm an idiot. Uh, snot is studs not up top. This is jumper pieces. There we go, that's what they're called. And I just dropped the boiler. And he lost his funnel. That's for Peter Sam, not Duncan, and not Renee's. That's for Peter Sam. Okay, Peter Sam is supposed to have the lost funnel that eventually turns into a famous drink. Because, you know, Peter Sam, and again and again, his new funnel will put us to shame. He went into a tunnel and lost his old funnel. And now his famous new funnel is ready. Why do engines go into tunnels and do stuff with their funnel? I mean, seriously. He went into a tunnel and lost his old funnel. He went into a tunnel and squeaked through his funnel and never came out again because you know Henry <laughs> but like it's one of my favorite rocks honestly for narrow gauge engines I have made Scarlowe, Peter Sam, and his handle um and they all kind of sucked <laughs> but they were at least in red like in the railway series so yeah there's at least that uh so Peter Sam's boiler is I swear that's Peter Sam's thing guys um but yeah and his windows are just there's a hand down there. Well, that's cool. So, uh, yeah. I, I high five a mystery hand. That's cool. Um, but yeah, his dome is literally just simple and fat. Because, you know, he's got a fat dome. PH fat, by the way. Because, <laughs> you know, Peter Sam. Or, Peter. You're Peter Sam. Though. Peter. No, his name is not freaking Peter Sam. Renaeus. Renessa. He has a fat dome. PH fat. I no, it's FAT. <laughs> it's FAT. <laughs> it is, though. Just like me. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's Renaeus. And he's also sturdy, except for his funnel, which keeps falling off because, you know, he apparently idolized with Peter Sam. So, just to prove how sturdy he is. Look at that. His entire chassis. Okay, well, I just did that now. His entire chassis is still intact. Look at that. that that's, that's amazing. His entire chassis. His entire boiler, even with his uh, ugly Mr. Freeze face, his entire uh, running board and everything is pretty much still intact. I mean, that's probably Duncan. Or I meant, I don't know, I meant the, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, the slate truck could have done that. Yeah, that would have been kind of beautiful. But no, the slate truck had to be stupid. Because you know, the truck's not stupid. And they think that Peter Sam was great. So yeah. Um. Yeah, not much else to say about that. Um, I broke a Lego piece. That's something else to say about that. Well, I suppose that's a great spot to end the video. So, <laughs> yeah, just kidding. So since you died, you're just gonna die some more. All right, this one does not have a chassis because he shares a chassis with Carby actually currently. Um, I don't really feel like taking it off of Carby right now because it, it's kind of fragile. Carby's fragile because he's very uh, insecure, so that means he's fragile. <laughs> so you're very insecure and fragile. Is that what you mean? You're very insecure. Sorry, you're being comforting. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, this is an original character who has not actually been in our show yet. He will be in. <laughs> um, he will be in the show in season, or excuse me, season, yeah, season one, episode, let's see, what, Rosie, Rosie, and Bethel is six, alright, he'll be in episode eight, then. no, seven, he'll be in episode seven, and this character is named Zach, I bet you have no idea who I named him after, oh, totally not me, no, I, I, this isn't me, it's just, uh, it's just, uh, this guy from, from Earth, who looks just like me, um, and he, he's literally, like, literally, he is exactly like me, um, and he built this, and this is him, okay, you know, screw it, I'm just sounding stupid, this is, this is based off of me, this is exactly, um, very similar, ba similarly based off of a GWR pug, 
uh, as you can see here, um, which is also the same basis that people think. Or excuse me, did I say GWR Pug? I'm stupid. <laughs> a GWR Trojan, which is what most people think that. So so there's, here's a Trojan. That was a Pug. This is a Trojan. Okay. GWR Trojan, which um, a lot of people think is the same basis as Percy, which uh, I am included in that. I do believe Percy is based off of a GWR Trojan. Um, so yeah, Percy here in the Railway Series, illustrated by John T. Kenny, um, and a Trojan. I mean... They're the same. So yeah. Uh, uh, so what I did with this one, this one's seven studs wide, except for unless you count these step ladders, which is actually super easy. It's just these two little bench pieces, two little uh, one by two bench tiles with the uh, one by two um, uh, bracket. And just stick those on and then you go to step ladder. As you know, step bro, I don't mean step ladder. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there, there's that. Um, yeah, super simple. Uh, seven studs wide at the cab, and the boiler is actually six studs wide. Now, what I did for that, it was incredibly difficult to do uh, at first. But what I did, I swear to God, sorry. there we go. I did it. I broke everything to do it, but I did it. Um, so anyway, there's that. Uh, let me just put this back together here. Uh, wonderful build on my time. Uh, so yeah. Do anyway. Do 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 do. <laughs> yeah. So his boiler six studs wide, as you can see. And then what I did is uh, I just put some random tiles, and you can see there's like a, you know, I think it's something yellow, but for some reason I want to put yellow. My bad. <laughs> um, um, anyway, I just used these uh, one by two jumper, jumper plates all the heck over it, um, so that I could have this at five studs wide. To line up with this being seven and then stick this on so yeah uh and those are all my trains that i got to show you today because because yeah so yeah um yeah yes these trains were harmed in the making of this film so sorry renee's yeah. you're the killer <laughs> What are you doing? Uh, um, uh, just, just, uh, click that after the video, you know. Yeah.